Coach, when the U.S. decided to rehire Greg Berhalter, one of the things we heard a lot about was the process and how thorough it was. And while I was hearing folks at the Federation talk like that, I kind of was thinking, well, they must have talked to Pellegrino Matarazzo. He was kind of the highest ranking American manager in Europe. So I wonder, you know, were you part of any of that thorough process that we heard of? Mm, I would, um, it's, a, it's a good question. I, I was contacted, I was contacted. Uh, it was a short conversation um, and it was, I think, towards the end of the, the whole process and uh, it was a good conversation. I, uh, we exchanged a couple of ideas and it was a, a nice conversation, but not the right timing for either party. Just more of a get to know each other kind of, kind of conversation and uh, see what happens moving forward. And does that make you feel good? Because I imagine, you know, even if they don't hire you as the head coach or right now, um, obviously there's the future, but even just from a U.S. Soccer Federation perspective, here's a huge asset. We've got a guy who's in the Bundesliga managing where a ton of, you know, our male players are right now. Do you feel like maybe beyond right now the head coaching role, you can help the Federation and U.S. Soccer and American Soccer from a distance? Well, it depends on depends on the depends on the role. Depends on uh, what the ideas are. I uh, I'm open to, to many many things. Um, I, the fact is is that I'm I'm very into what I'm doing right now, and I think this is the right place to be at Hoffenheim. Uh, just looking to move forward in my own game, and um, I think club ball is is for me at the moment to be on the pitch every day, work with players every day is. Uh, where the learning cur curve is also the highest, uh, but at the same time, parallel to anything, I'm always open to exchanging um, ideas with anybody who's looking for anything from me. So, um, always, like I said, I think in an interview back back uh, a couple of months ago, that um, it's I'm always looking to to give back uh, to U.S. soccer, especially at some point. Uh, there's something connecting me back to the states, and not only my family, just my whole upbringing and. Uh, and I, I like to see the direction everything's moving in. It makes me very uh, optimistic and uh, gives me a little feeling of, uh, how do you say, yeah, excitement, excitement uh, moving forward, especially with the World Cup coming up as well. So let's, uh, but I take it day by day and uh, whatever happens, happens. Uh, we'll see. Uh, that line I mentioned, Pellegrino, about you being the highest ranking active manager right now in the European theater among Americans. How does that make you feel? I, I would imagine that that's a, a great source of pride for you, especially kind of knowing where you've come from and, and, and the long, the decades of work uh, that it took to get here. Well, I don't know what the highest rank is. Um, and that doesn't even- There's no other manager in the top five leagues, Pellegrino. You can pat yourself on the back. It's okay. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll pat myself on the back for, for getting to where I am. Uh, on my own way, in my own terms, and uh, without any, any, how do you say, any help? Um, I would put it that way. But doesn't mean, also doesn't mean I'm the best U.S. manager. I think there's a lot of good U.S. coaches out there. Maybe that I didn't get the chance to perform on this level. Um, and like I said, I, I don't, uh, I don't feel much, much. I don't have much time to feel pride because you're just in the tunnel when you're when you're working here and you're just going through your everyday things. Um, I'm happy to see my family uh, celebrating every goal. Uh, they sent me videos after, uh, during the game. And um, so we celebrate small moments together and um, I'm happy to be doing what I'm doing. But other than that, uh, my, how do you say that? It doesn't go much further than that at the moment. All right, there he is, Pellegrino Matarazzo, Herc. Turns out U.S. soccer did give him a call when they were going through their thorough process looking for the next manager of the U.S. men's national team. What'd you make of the interview? That's the part that stood out the most. Um, it was the way he responded. Like, yeah, they called, but it sounded like it was a courtesy call. Uh, don't know how serious or, or in-depth the actual interview was. So, listen, hats off to him. You, you know, he's still the highest ranking coach, American coach out there. And, and most people don't know who he is. You know, mm. most people never heard of him. The casual U.S. men's national fan doesn't know who he is. And here he is in the Bundesliga thriving with another team. Um, it, go, it goes to show you, man, how sometimes uh, there are stones that even if they're overturned or turned, uh, sometimes they're not valued. So uh, more power to him and hopefully he continues to do what he's doing and, and can strive for bigger and better. Stock only going up, right? I mean, it was pretty impressive what he did at Stuttgart. 
took him up from Bundesliga two, kept him in the Bundesliga. Hoffenheim's, I think, a little bit bigger job, and now he's got a chance that if he finishes this season off, gets him into Europe, maybe gets him into the Champions League. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Now when you talk about American managers that have done things, he's got to be at the top of pretty much uh, anybody's list if he can continue uh, and have some more success here at Hoffenheim. The, the specific words, Herc, were, it was a short conversation and it was at the end of the process. But at least they talked to Pellegrino Matarazzo. At least they talked to him. Uh, so U.S. Soccer, we can add one more name to the list of folks that they talked to before eventually settling on Greg Berhalter. <laughs> 